What's up guys? First I just want to say thank you guys so much for liking and subscribing and engaging. As I've been advertising on all my social media and on my videos, when we hit a thousand subscribers on YouTube, I would tell you why I left porn. And the truth is, it's a conglomeration of things. And I was honestly starting to get very disillusioned with the industry, like, within the first three months of being in it, but, you know, once your vagina is on the internet, like, what the fuck are you gonna do? Just kind of get out of the way. Is if you get into porn, you are not guaranteed success. And for most wannabe porn stars, particularly girls and particularly young girls, they think that the second they take their clothes off on camera and fuck for the world to see that they're just on the path to success. And it's honestly a mentality that all the producers and directors and everybody, like, they kind of support. They're just like, yeah, you just get into this, like, shoot everything you can, you'll build a platform, build a following, and then you leverage that until just like toy deals and websites and blah, 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 and you're just gonna, everything's gonna be great. This is literally what everyone tells these young girls. How the fuck else are you gonna get them to take a nine inch, like six inch thick dick in their ass in the first month, you know, when they've never done it before? You're, you're not gonna do it unless they think it's gonna be fucking awesome and they're gonna be famous and Jenna Jameson, right? Great. And the truth is that 90% of people get into porn don't, are not that successful. Just the fastest the fact of the matter, you know? <laughs> and the problem with this is, and the problem I have with it a lot, society will never forgive you for, for doing porn. You might be able to like, oh, I'll go get my real estate license or I'll go to law school and like whatever, but like, you know, the second they put your name in, your fucking genitals are gonna come up. Like, what are you gonna do, honestly? There's just, we're just not there yet. I mean, Italy elected a former porn star as a candidate for parliament, but America is just not there, guys. So this general, just like, so this general societal pushback coupled with these just like not very well managed expectations of what happens when you do porn is just it's just really difficult for me to see and handle and experience and I don't even really want to be a part of anything like that the next thing that I consider to be like a really big deal are fucking agents I need to get my zen on for this bullshit <laughs> uh, first of all there's just not really any good people who are agents I don't know how it is in other entertainment industries, but in porn, they are glorified pimps. I'm just gonna be honest about that. I've, I've met many of them. Some of them seem like cool people. They have hearts, they're businessmen. They say that they care about the girls, but when it comes down to it, they are in the business of selling girls into sex acts. And the more they can get out of a girl and the more they can get her to do, oftentimes for the least amount of money and the more volume, the better they personally do and the more producers come to them to ask them for their girls to do stuff because if you if you're an agent and you have a relationship with a producer and you're feeding him 18 year old girls to do anal that they've never done before and you're feeding it to them at like pretty good rates because you just tell the girls like oh this is what everybody gets and they accept it as bible verse because they're fucking idiots because they're 18 those producers just keep coming back so there's a huge conflict of interest in this field and a, and a huge just broken incentive structure they'll almost always pick the producer side in any kind of conflict Conflict because honestly the producer is more important than the girl in porn 80% of girls are gonna be out within a year or two right so if you're an agent you have a more of an interest in prolonging and developing a relationship with producers who continue to put money in your pocket no matter which girls are on your roster they just don't care about your like mental health and well-being you know some of them pretend to but really like they care about how many dollar signs you put in their account and you know it's a business and they like to try to be super ruthless and rational about it but like when it's a business that involves 18 year old girls, I think you need to be a little bit more fucking human and they're not. Are there exceptions to this behavior? Yes. If you're like a one, like a really popular girl, the agent might be like particularly protective of you and your interests and your qualms because you know, you bring in a lot of money and everyone's shooting you and you have a little bit more say. You have a little bit more leeway to be like, you know, a diva or whatever. <laughs> they like to call girls who actually have a head on their shoulders. And the other exception is they don't really do well if producers are trying to get girls to do like anal when all it is is a vanilla sex scene or if they're like physically hurting her and bruising her when they're not supposed to be because she has to do a shoot the next day and they don't want to get in trouble with the next producer so the agents really only care about the girl when it directly affects them i had two agents in porn i actually liked them as people so for me to be saying this i'm just being completely objective like i I liked those two agents and other agents I've met as people. I thought they were like smart business people, fairly level-headed, um, sometimes pleasant to talk to. 
However, when it came down to the actual issues and the actual work, I thought they were like pieces of ruthless shit. I can't tell you how many times I felt bullied and pushed to do things I didn't want to do or wasn't comfortable with or with people I didn't want to do it with. And the agents would just say, well, if you don't do it, this producer will never book you again. If you don't do it, then you'll get this bad reputation because everybody knows each other. And if you don't do it, like they just scare the shit out of you. Fortunately for me, I'm not particularly impressionable. <laughs> I'm kind of a rebellious asshole sometimes. <laughs> so most of the time I told them to shove it and then I got screamed at, which happened. Then I worked less. That's what happens if you don't take that bullshit. Nothing good, basically. So I can only imagine, you know, these 18 to 20 year old girls who are being told these things are being pushed around this way. They just fucking do it and suck it up and cry later. And that sucks. So a lot of you say, well, you know, if you're a popular porn star and you have all these followers and stuff on you, you just book yourself and you can once you get to that level but from getting zero to hero you don't know the people to call they don't know of you they don't care they need they literally need girls in front of their face to say okay I want to book her for something and if you don't have an agent you lose out on literally like 80% of those opportunities okay so the next really important issue that I had with the porn industry is lack of effective safeguards against exploitation what I mean by this is, I think a lot of people have this notion that, oh, these women in porn, like, there's no way they'd be doing this unless they're forced into it. Like, they're all being pimped out and they're all just, like, broken inside and this is all they can do and they're drug addicts and they're doing it for drugs. And it's like, that's a little bit extreme. <laughs> the exploitation is honestly in the gray area. Here's the thing in porn, when a producer hires you, they are literally in their heads renting your body for their purposes. They might agree on the general purposes with an agent before, so you're not gonna run into many situations where you're on set and they're just like, okay, do the anal now, and you're like, wait, what, I didn't know this was an anal scene? It happens, but it's that's typically like less of a problem. What is likely to happen is, let's say, your agent calls you and says, all right, you're gonna do a girl-girl scene, but you're gonna have some toys and they're gonna put the toys in your butt. Like, are you comfortable with that? And you'll be like, yeah, sure. Like, cause in your head, you're just like, oh, we're just gonna put in a butt plug and she's gonna eat me out and it's gonna be a fun time. Like, let's go. And then you get to set and the producer like hands you a speculum and you're like, this is not an anal toy. Like, you don't use fucking speculums to put in your fucking asshole, okay? <laughs> and they're just like, well, you know, this is girl girl anal with toys. Like, this is a toy. They use speculums in porn all the time, so you should be able, you should be comfortable with that. This is what I booked you for. And this is what I'm talking about, is like these little things on set that honestly, as a female performer, if you say, no, fuck that, they're literally gonna be like, who is this bitch and who does she think she is? Even though, honestly, you're completely justified. You're just like, listen, this is not an anal toy, this is not agreed upon before, no one asked me if I put a fucking speculum in my ass, that shit is sharp. I am going to cut myself. So this is just like a small example that hopefully you can extrapolate to other situations that might arise and girls honestly end up doing a lot of shit in this gray area they really don't wanna do and once you do a lot of that, you're like, I really didn't want to do that today. I really didn't want to do that today. You just like end up not having a fucking fun time as much, you know? And that was happening a lot to me. And let me just tell you about a particular experience I had that I thought was just absolutely nuts. And was honestly, it was, like, it was the last time I was on a porn set. And it was just completely unacceptable to me. And it was honestly probably the straw that broke the camel's back for me. I put up with a lot of shit. I'm pretty fucking adventurous. I was willing to put a lot of things and a lot of places with a lot of different types of fluids and things. <laughs> and uh, I felt like I was pretty open-minded. However, this was so far over the line, it was not even cool. So here's what happened. I get booked for a, a normal boy-girl uh, squirting scene because I have this weird thing where I can do that a lot on command. Don't ask me. I don't. It just happened a year ago. <laughs> it was with a producer I've worked with almost a year prior and hadn't had the best experience with. So I was determined to just do everything perfectly that day and be totally respectful because he did a lot of shooting for a company I wanted to work with a lot. So I was really like in the right headspace, had a good attitude and I was all about it. We get to set and everything goes really smooth. I do everything he asks of me, everything's super great. And then the male talent gets there. Let me just clear this up. I had worked with this male talent once in the past. I didn't particularly like him and the day before the shoot, I had told my agent I did not want to work with this guy particularly for a squirting scene because I did not think he was good at it. I didn't like his 
just personality and how he came to me and it's like all you need to do anal 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 you need to do anal now do some anal I'm just like fuck you I'll do anal when I want to do it <laughs> he's like oh, I'll make you grow so fast I was like listen I've grown pretty fast off of doing absolutely nothing so I don't need you to give me some fucking career advice I need you to figure out how to get your dick hard right now okay shut up so beyond actually not liking him personally which I was rare for me I typically almost always like male talent he just was really bad at the technique that you need to be good at for squirting at least in my case I'm maybe he's great with other girls but for me he thought that he should just like try to just pull out your ovaries or something I don't know but I wasn't into it <laughs> so I was like I don't want to work with this guy for a scene like that maybe a normal scene but not this scene anyway my agent's like don't be difficult blah 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 and I was like fine I'll make the best of it I'll do it fine so the second this male talent gets a set remember I already don't really like him he says oh hey baby uh, look I have these pills you take these pills and make you squirt so much more and this pill box was a, a Russian pill box so I couldn't read anything on it it didn't come from fucking CVS I'd never heard of any pills that make you squirt more and listen I've heard everything about all the tricks in porn so if anyone had ever mentioned a squirting pill I would have heard of it so my guess is that they were prescription drugs like Xanax or painkillers or something like that because he thought if he gave me one of those I wouldn't be like cunty and I'd come easier which is true because I totally have taken drugs like that and come easier but that's my guess is he was trying to give me like prescription drugs to make me easier to work with or something I don't know I'm obviously like now I'm just pissed off like I'm just super offended that you came to me because you basically say number one last time I didn't think you squirted well which is fucking insulting because it's not true <laughs> and number two I'm th I think you're stupid enough to take my fucking prescription drugs on this set and number three I'm used to doing this to girls on a regular basis so I'm just like, I do not even like your character right now. I don't like who you are and I really don't want to put your dick in me. But okay, he's supposed to be recently tested so I'm sure everything's gonna be fine and I'm just literally never gonna work with him again. No problem, I'm gonna not be a diva. I'm not gonna like fuck up the day. Cool, I have like, I have, I have always been like super neurotic about checking tests. Like honestly, STDs were like the one thing that I was actually really scared of in porn even though it's kind of hard to get. But I was always fucking neurotic about it because things have slipped through the cracks. So, you know, I'm just like, hey, I need to see your test to this guy. Quick side note, the last time I worked with him, I had seen his test, but he just like zoomed in, flicked it around, and we were in a rush that day. For whatever reason, I wasn't as neurotic as I normally was. So I was like, I need to see your test this time. And he, first of all, was like, not like immediately, oh yeah, sure, no problem, here you go. He was literally like, oh, okay, let me find it. Like, I'm such a fucking inconvenience to you for making sure you have a clean fucking dick that I'm about to take bear back again. Fuck this guy. He pulls out his test and I start reading it, and what do I see? but syphilis positive. So let me just clarify. He did not have syphilis active. When you contract syphilis at any time in your life, you will always test positive for the antibodies. And there will be a separate test that says you no longer have it in your blood. You're not contagious. But here's my thinking on the matter, and this is because I'm extremely overly sexually educated because I'm a humongous hypochondriac. <laughs> syphilis is extremely hard to contract and the demographics for syphilis contraction are extremely similar to HIV contraction. The problem in porn is so many people escort on the side because they, they want to make extra money because you really don't make that much money from shooting. The fact that I had issues with this guy's character combined with the fact that he had contracted syphilis before made me just like, listen, I don't know whose butthole was in where last night and I don't like you <laughs> and I just I am not comfortable with this like I can't I can't sleep with you and it really sucked because I had I was so committed to just making this a really good day and making a really good impression on this producer I couldn't compromise my self-respect I knew if I actually did the scene that day I would literally lay in bed for two weeks anxious at night until I was able to get a new a CD test that would have been accurate which maybe it's irrational he works with tons of girls all the time they're fine but all it takes is one time you know all it takes is one fuck up maybe he's just been getting lucky like I don't know but I wasn't willing to risk it you know what I'm saying so I was just like hey listen guys I I'm not comfortable with this I can't I can't work with this performer today I really want to be able to but this is just too much for me however I know this other male performer that you hire all the time that works for this company all the time that I've worked with that I like very much and he says he can be here in around half an hour 45 minutes and so we can save the day everything's gonna be fine and what do you guys think no no reason of course no fucking reason in this goddamn industry no no I get yelled at how you're so stupid like what do you think you're doing do you not understand what fucking antibody is? He got that shit in 2010. You're so, you know, and just like getting fucking berated. Like it's my fault this guy comes to set with syphilis and doesn't fucking like 
tell anybody or clarify it with the beforehand and I'm supposed to just accept it in my body no so I'm getting yelled at my agent calls me everyone's yelling at me and at the same time condescending to me as if I don't understand the concept of antibodies when they're the ones who don't understand the concept of CDC risk factors I'm sorry and it was just an all-around shitty day so here's the thing in porn First of all, in LA County, you're not supposed to be fucking having sex on a porn set without condoms. But everyone does it, because it's not really enforceable. However, there's supposed to be a rule in porn that if you don't feel comfortable, you're allowed to say, hey, I need condoms for today. You know? So that's what I said. I was like, hey, listen, we can use some condoms since you're so against this other male, male performer. Let's do the scene. We'll, we'll use some condoms, and I'll still be able to like squirt and everything you want to do. Nope. <laughs> not only did they say no, they laughed at me. It was comical. And <laughs> basically the thinking in porn is, yeah, you have the right to ask for condoms on set if you're uncomfortable, but we have the right to just not shoot you because you asked for condoms and we're the producers. So there's no such thing as condoms in porn if you want them. There just isn't. Maybe on some other producer set, perhaps with female producers, it might be a different story. But that was my experience with this day. And it just Everything about it was just so completely obnoxious and unreasonable and the fact that I was also being called stupid for my thinking and decision was just fucking deplorable. So my point is I had no recourse after this. No one agreed with me. There's not like a better business bureau for porn or producers. There's not a Yelp that I couldn't give them a bad review. You know, all I could do was make a fucking bunch of noise on social media, which is what I did because it was fucking wrong. It was just wrong. And there's just no safeguards. Like that just shouldn't have happened. It, it shouldn't have happened, but there's no sag like there is in Hollywood. There's nothing to protect you. And that really sucks because every, even though everything can be hunky-dory for 98% of the time, it's the 2% that matters, you know? And I just wasn't willing to have other experiences like this. There's obviously tons of girls and people who are not as, I don't know, difficult as me, I suppose. They can have fun in that, but I just knew, like, if I was having these pro kind of problems, like, they're not gonna stop. So, might as well quit now. The next major issue I have, and related to another very problematic incident for me, is the sense of just pushing ethical boundaries. People are just more and more desensitized to just normal sex, it's true. And to the point where just two adults having sex isn't really gonna get people off. You gotta do anal, you gotta do double penetrations, you gotta do all these things. And now, if you go to any porn site, you're pretty instantly gonna get a pop-up of a girl who looks about 12 with braces taking a dick half her size. What they're trying to do is sell that like pedophilic fantasy. And it's very common. Like honestly, if you're a girl and you're 18 or 19 or 20 and you look underage, like you are gonna get bucked. Like, fuck. <laughs> they just want the most extreme things they can think of. I was on this set once in Florida. Florida is known for this like thriving amateur industry. Like so many of these very young looking 18 year old girls are coming from Florida. And I grew up in Florida and it's because that culture is backwards as fuck probably. <laughs> from what I can say. I get a last minute booking for a scene. No one really told me anything. I didn't even know who I was working with and I didn't usually care when it came to girls because they just are less problematic than guys for me. Let's leave it there. <laughs> and when I get there, you know, we're getting makeup and stuff. The girls get there and they're literally like, they weren't just 18. They were 18 in December. They had both just turned 18 within the past couple weeks. Like literally these girls should have been in high school at this time. Like they literally should have been sitting in a desk. Like this wasn't the weekend. This was like a Monday. Why weren't you fucking in your senior year of high school? Like what is going on? And like, no, oh, we dropped out. We dropped out of high school to do porn. You're not, I don't care who you are, where you're from, like, you're not ready to do something like porn when you're a senior in high school. So, um, not only, so not, it wasn't just like that, you know, uh, that was what it was, okay, you come from a bad background, you don't, you know, whatever the case, maybe porn could be good for you, maybe you'll make a lot of money and maybe someone will be a good influence on you and tell you to save it and everything will be fine and you'll work for years and years, like fucking 10% best case scenario. But what really I just was, left me struggling not to cry constantly this day is they dressed them up in little girl clothes from like Target. Like, like you know how you go to Target, you go to clothes and then there's just like women and juniors and little girls the clothes were from there. They were from the little girl section. They were wearing little flat loafers like Catholic school girls and these like tiny little shirts and skirts that hiked up that they hiked up like and those fluffy socks. And the girls already look fucking 12. And they put basic makeup on them and then dress them up this way. So like when I looked at them, I'm just like, like they literally wanted me to 
work with these girls sexually and like they look like children they both were so tiny that if they were walking in like an elementary school line in front of me like i i would assume they're sixth graders and um it's not like you know this i really wanted to just be like i can't do this but again you know word travels like super duper fast and they were 18 and you know uh, you know i just I was like, I tried to make the best of it. And I was like, so you just turned 18, like, how are you here? And she's like, oh, I used to go to this house party when I was like, you know, 16, 17, and I met this guy, he's an agent. He told me I'd be this great big porn star and I would be so successful and I really believed him and he's sort of been just kind of like preparing me. So as soon as I turned 18, like here I am. Like literally some piece of shit, like 20 something year old glorified pimp is going to house parties with underage girls and convincing them to do porn. So, um, it's, <laughs> and aside from that, you know, these people are probably going to get involved in bad things to begin with, but the producers just keep turning it out. They don't give a fuck, you know? They make millions of dollars a year off of shooting porn and they feel the need to shoot elementary school girls. <laughs> basically so you know I just I just don't even want to be associated with shit like that <laughs> and I never tweeted or promoted that scene I didn't like show people I was ashamed that I did it and uh, I, I just take issue with that general culture in the industry so the next final uh, couple th couple reasons I'm not really gonna like delve into because I think this video is getting kind of long and I covered the major issues of what really made me quit like to my core but just to add a few more things uh, the industry is extremely outdated, you know, they haven't really caught up with the millennial generation and they're still doing like really outdated shit like fucking DVD box covers and stuff and it's just like, just just watching it just makes my head hurt because it's so stupid. <laughs> the sex, uh, after the initial like, oh my god, I'm having sex on camera and like people are jerking off to me wears off, which is like after a month for me. <laughs> um, it's pretty boring, like the sex is, just, it is work and like the guy will be having sex with you and then like all of a sudden like cut and the guy just stops and like whatever was happening that was like cool is like done and it's just instant and it's like well what happened to like passion and connection and eroticism like no there's not any of that in porn it's like super sterile <laughs> i don't want my sex to be a job i like sex too much to let a job ruin it and just the sex just isn't that good it's not that comfortable half the time you're having sex at like this angle that doesn't even hit your g-spot like over it you know <laughs> and then finally like the money's just not worth it you know maybe if you're getting ten thousand dollars a scene or something like i did at first but i'm gonna talk about this in another video about like you know what i made in porn but we can just leave it here the money just isn't that good and it can be good if you take advantage of lots of additional revenue streams um like snapchat stuff and all those other things but for me there's only so many times i can take a picture or video of my fucking ass before i'm just like god damn what the fuck am i doing with my life like, like, I just, like, don't have fun taking pictures of my ass anymore. <laughs> so, you know, that's pretty much what you need to be doing all the time if you want to make extra money as a porn star. And I just can't do it. I'm sorry. I apologize to you guys. I want you guys to know that despite everything I've said, porn is still a better industry than it gets credit for. It's not as good as it would like you to believe. However, there are a lot of cool people in it. It can feel very much like a family. It can potentially make you feel very empowered in some ways if you have, uh, if you manage to keep control and be successful at it. There's a lot of opportunities for growth because it's just such an outdated industry. There's just tons of disruptive opportunities if you were to take advantage of it. And I definitely had a lot of good experiences, fun experiences, met cool people. I'm still friends with some of them. So I don't want to give you this impression like it's this like terrible thing, but the systemic problems and broken incentive structures are just like too much for me personally, coupled with the fact that I fell in love with someone and I'm really fucking happy and I'm happier than I've ever been. So, you know, what am I going to do? So I hope this video was really informative. I'm being as authentic as possible. If I seem like I'm a bitch, like I'm sorry, I'm just being real with you and all I'm saying. And I want to emphasize that I consider porn to have been an amazing learning experience. I don't regret leaving Wall Street. I 
always wanted to have like an unconventional lifestyle and be adventurous and at the end of my life I want to be able to say I did a fuckload of shit that no one else had the balls to do so I really value the fact that I did porn and I really value the fact that I can say I worked on Wall Street and I did porn in the same sentence now that's like pretty cool so I hope you guys enjoyed this video please hit the like button if you did and I'll keep making more just like sort of confession videos like this I have a lot of crazy life stories you guys might want to hear and um, hit that subscribe button because it really helps my channel grow and I'm like loving seeing the little bits of growth every single day it makes me so fucking happy so bye